Hello, my name's Martin Dory, and you're watching Adorama TV. Welcome to this, the fourth episode of my series about extreme photography. Now today, I'm back on the beach with Clive Sim. He's a surfing photographer with over 20 years experience shooting surfing on the north coast of Cornwall here in the UK. Now, to do that, he's got some very specialist equipment, and some of it has to undergo some pretty rigorous conditions. Um, not generally like it is today, but let's go and have a little rummage around in his kit pack. Okay, Clive, so we're here on the beach, beautiful day, loads and loads of light. You've got your go-to lens out, tell me about it. Uh, well, this, as you say, this is my go-to lens for surf photography. It's a Canon 600mm f4. Um, it's all weatherproof, which is very handy for around here. Although saying that, it does suffer sometimes from, uh, from the salty spray. The quality on it is just second to none. It's absolutely amazing. I can, I've got photographs where you can see bubbles inside water droplets being flung off the surfboard. You can see stitching on wetsuits with it. Um, that and the, and the camera body that I use, the Canon 1DX. It's just an unbeatable combination as far as I'm concerned. How fast is the lens? What kind of apertures are you able to shoot at? Uh, most lenses have got a sweet spot, and I think this one's about f8. You, I'll get a little bit more in focus, because obviously focus is critical for me, and f8 tends to give me the best of both worlds between low light capability and uh, the, what I get. I should get in focus. And would you push the ISO if, to keep the um, f step? Uh, it, it depends what the conditions are like. If it's really dull and dingy, um, I will push ISO up to 6400 sometimes um, to keep f8. If, the, if it's not too bad, then I'll, I'll, I'll drop, the, um, drop the aperture a little yeah. bit. Now, do you remember the shot? The shot of Nathan we were talking about before. Do you remember what well, what the lighting was like? That, and also, what settings you were shooting at? Yeah, well, that, that that shot of Nathan is, as we know, it was on a really stormy day. The conditions were awful. I had actually cranked the ISO up and dropped the f-stop a little bit on that because I was so far away from the action. So you tend to get more in focus the further away you are. So, and I was probably about half a mile, three quarters of a mile away to get to get everything I wanted shooting in the shot. Shooting at f4. Shooting at probably about f5.6 on that one. At 6400. Yeah. And are you quite happy to shoot at f4 um, with the focus? What's the focus like? The, tr the trouble with these lenses and focusing is they've got such a tiny, tiny depth of field on them. So you've got maybe 10 feet in focus if you're really lucky. So you have to, I have to use autofocus. The camera is so accurate and it's quicker than my eye as well to focus on stuff and it, it tracks fluidly. Um, but I can only use the centre focusing point because if I get a splash from the wave in front, it comes into frame, it'll instantly lock on the on the closest item. You can set it on the custom functions, I just find the centre focusing point is the one for me because I, I can track it, I can frame it, I can do everything I want with that one. And it is super accurate. So why the 600, why not 400? Is it just the, the, um, the quality of this lens? Yes, the quality primarily for me is, is as I say, it's unbeatable. Um, and also I get the reach with it. I can, a lot of the sponsors want to be able to read the logos and the shots. And with this, you can do that. Um, and with this camera body as well, I can actually crop in even tighter and you can't see any difference in the, in the quality. Okay, so this isn't a normal lens, is it? I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty heavy. How do you, you know, how do you shoot on it? Do you shoot handheld, tripod? I have to use a tripod. I have on very, very rare occasions shot handheld, but it is, as you say, it's really, really heavy. I'm not sure of the exact weight, but if you... So, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty heavy. It's, it's so heavy that I have to have a, a special bag for it. This one came from America years ago. Not available as I'm, I'm aware in the UK. The places I, I walk to, I've got to have it on my back, basically. This, the value of this lens, quite a lot of money? Uh, to replace it, I think it's about £8,000, plus okay. five for the camera body. So yeah. you want to make sure they're well protected. It's got to be looked after. And do you keep the body on the lens when you uh, when Yeah, when, you when, when, I'm, when I'm walking about, yes. When I'm moving about all the time. Um, if I'm moving from... You know, if I'm moving 10 yards on the beach, I'll stick it back in the bag. It's just not worth chancing dropping it in, in, the, in the sand or the salty sea pools or anything like that. So. Yeah, and I guess when you're out and about, you, wouldn't, you're not, you, you don't really <laughs> want to be changing lenses, do you? No, no, absolutely not. Um, I mean, one of, the, one of the issues with digital SLRs is you get dirt on your sensor. And when you're out in the wind and the salty air, the second that lens comes off, invisible stuff is attaching itself to the... To the mirror box if you like and as soon as the mirror comes up and take an exposure bit stick on the on the center and i am cleaning my sensor after every two or three sessions maybe so and tell me up. about your tripod as well because obviously you need a pretty hefty piece of kit to carry that lens yeah hefty but light would be good okay this is hefty 
but it's not that light, not really. It's carbon fibre with magnesium fixings on it. Uh, but you can see again, this, this was actually less than a year old, but the magnesium is corroding already on it. So again, it's just because of it's, the conditions yeah. you're at in, yeah. on the beach, weather. sand yeah. and salt. I always rinse it when I get home, but you can't get it, you never get it all off, so. Okay, so, so yeah, I mean, I guess you need, you know, and you've got a fluid head on there, I think, as well. Yeah, it's, a, right? it's, a, it's actually a video head. I just find it easier to control the camera because the camera's so heavy. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's image stabilised the lens as well, but with the fluid head, it just gives you that much smoother movement. So these guys are moving pretty quickly, quite a long way away. Yeah. Yeah, they've, I mean, some of them move extremely quickly, especially when they're doing big moves and errors and what have you. So another useful thing with this camera is this burst rate. It'll do 12 frames a second for me. So I can get a whole move in that lasts a second, say, and there's, there's 12 decent photographs out of it. And you can choose the best one, the body position, where the logo is on the board, say, or the wetsuit that the sponsors are looking for, and you choose exactly the one that you want, and, and it works. So you would always shoot in burst, would you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Always. And in terms of the, the, the cameras, obviously very quick. Are you using SD cards that are highly rated? Um, CF cards on this, it actually takes two. Um, and I think I'm running two big fat 128 gig cards on it. Yeah. And they, I'll shoot to both just in case one of them fails. So they've both got the same images on them. Okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got a backup. Of yeah. but you. you get 2,000 plus shots on any one of those. So. So, you're, so when you're out, you're not, you've got enough storage to be able to shoot. Yeah, I don't want to open that everything. door when I'm out. Okay, and tell me about the, um, tell me about the camera. This thing's probably taken 30,000 photographs. Right, okay, it still looks good as new, so yeah. it's obviously you're obviously doing I look something after it. right. Yeah, I look after them. Considering how extreme you've been yeah. taking it. Yeah. Do you have a problem with sand? And does the, uh, does the sand ever get into the workings of the lens? I've not had it yet, touch wood. Um, but it's, it's always an issue, you know, I mean, I've fallen over on the beach before. I've even had a dog take one of my tripod legs out on me before. Not that one, it, it bent the leg in half, it was a right off. Harriet was called, actually, at Woodmouth Bay, running down the beach. Right. Harry, 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 and the next thing I know, I turn around, it's taken my leg out, now the tripod, and I just catch my camera before it hits the sand, so. Didn't get sand in it, but I lost a tripod. So <laughs> and she was off chasing the dog, and that was it. She was all away. kinds of hazards yeah. for a surf photographer. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for joining me on Adorama TV today. Next time, we're gonna be looking at shooting mermaids. Until then, if you want more great tips and tricks, please go to the Learning Center. And if you want more great videos, don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. Finally, please like, comment, or share this video. And don't forget to get in touch if there's anything you want to know.